Natalie Javot's electricity bill will soon climb by about 10 percent, an increase that will be hard to swallow. The cost of living has, has come up like every discussion we had. It's just like a COVID discussion. You talk about it for 20 minutes and then you're like, we all agree, it's horrible, it's getting worse. Javot recently replaced her hot water heater. Her grocery bill keeps growing, just like her fuel bill. I feel like I have trouble paying my bills. But when I see a light that is on and is not supposed to be on, like I turn it off right away. I feel like I'm very cheap on electricity and still my bill is like, wow. <laughs> if electricity bills are about to go up in Newfoundland, it's all down to a mega project in Labrador that went very wrong. The Muskrat Falls Dam is an unprecedented fiasco. Construction has cost $13.4 billion, nearly double what was forecast. Just 280,000 electricity customers bear that monumental bill. People like Natalie Javot. The province announced the Muskrat Falls project more than a decade ago. Well, folks, this is a day of great historic significance. It was supposed to green the island's electricity grid and fill the government's coffers by exporting clean energy to the rest of North America. What happened is very different. The dam itself has worked well for about a year. A small team is all that's needed to staff the plant, maintaining four generating units, thousands of meters of cable, and panel after panel of flashing lights. The Muskrat Falls power lines are another story. Equipment and software failures are frequent. For months, the lines have transmitted only about half the electricity produced at the dam. The transmission system crosses through Labrador, then jumps the Strait of Belle Isle, stretching 1,100 kilometers all the way to the Avalon Peninsula. The lines also send electricity to Nova Scotia, the only outside buyer for Muskrat Falls power. Wires and other equipment have recently snapped or fallen to the ground for unknown reasons, often in isolated areas which require days to access. Thick ice has also caused repeated concerns. Helicopter pilots perform a high-wire act to remove the ice, hitting lines with 500-pound telephone poles. Software problems also plagued the lines. Newfoundland and Labrador Hydro fixed one problem in February, but found two others. Hydro hopes to complete final testing of the transmission system by mid-April, but the clock is ticking. High power testing needs to happen during peak demand when there are cold temperatures. During the last attempt in November, 60,000 customers on the island lost electricity. A recent report on the transmission lines, called the Labrador Island Link, or LIL, openly questioned the system's reliability. The LIL should experience decades without weather-related interruptions. It continues to experience them at yearly or greater frequencies. And incident frequency also raises questions about how well the LIL was completed. The LIL is not viable because it has demonstrated uh, to not be reliable. It's hard to draw any other conclusion, says one of Muskrat's early critics. You have a Labrador Island link that is not dependable and that could be out of service for six, seven weeks or longer in the wintertime. Hydro says Muskrat Falls proved essential to the province during a recent cold snap. Power from the dam helped keep the lights on when many cranked up the heat. There's a, a bit of a, I think, a, a myth that folks think that thing will never operate. They'll never get a megawatt out of it. And that's simply not true. Despite repeated setbacks, Hydro CEO says she's optimistic. The plant is really running really, really well. The LIL is already running well at low power. I know it's going to get better um, at higher power. So I feel very good about this asset. Still, Hydro recognizes its new transmission system is vulnerable and that climate change is making weather patterns more unpredictable. That means a key argument in favor of Muskrat Falls no longer holds water. The project was supposed to replace this aging oil-burning power plant, the Holy Regenerating Station, which is the province's second biggest industrial emitter. But there's no choice but to keep Holyrood alive. That's what their own experts are telling us. So will we always need some backup? Perhaps. Short term, Hydro will have to keep buying and burning hundreds of thousands of barrels of oil per year, maintaining a plant opened in the 60s, spending money that was supposed to help pay down muskrat debt. Long term, Hydro says Holyrood should still close by 2030, but another major project is now planned, this time at Beta Spear. Hydro says an eighth turbine must be added here to ensure grid reliability. The price tag? Another $500 million. That bill will also fall to people like Natalie Javot. It's a hard reality to face, especially after the promises made a decade ago. They lie to you and it's kind of frustrating. 
Proponents of the project called Muskrat Falls the lowest cost option for the province's future electricity needs. It's the right project for the province. Uh, tremendous benefits are accruing to the province. As revealed during a lengthy inquiry, executives leading the project had little or no experience building hydro dams, taking unprincipled steps and concealing the true cost of Muskrat Falls from a government unable to properly assess the risk. Things could have been worse. Electricity costs would have doubled without hundreds of millions in subsidies promised by the province. We recognize that it is uh, important that Canadians be there for one another. Ottawa intervened too, announcing a $5.2 billion debt restructuring deal. We have to find the ways and means to keep electricity affordable uh, as a result of Muskrat Falls. And in order to keep it affordable, it's going to cost the provincial treasury. So, and uh, that will be perhaps uh, for the rest of our lives.